In this video presentation, we're going to see how open automation software can be used to interface with Sparkplug B to transmit data to an MQTT broker from industry 4.0 data sources like Allen Bradley, Siemens, Modbus, OPC UA, OPC DA, and MQTT as an edge of network node. We'll also see how open automation software can be used as a host application to control edge of network nodes and receive data from them to transfer them back to the industry 4.0 data sources and of course consume them to other applications like data logging, Excel, trending, alarming, visualization, all the features that are built into open automation software. We'll also see how writes to a Sparkplug B metric can be received by OES and then transmitted back to the data source of the tag if it's acting as an edge of network node and of course send values as a host application to metric nodes as well. If you'd like to follow along visit the website at openautomationsoftware.com and there you can download a free version of the 30-day trial of open automation software to try the steps that I'm about to demonstrate for you yourself. You'll find the guide for using open automation software under our support link under knowledge base. And the steps that we're going to cover today are both as a host application in our second part of the video. We're going to set up Sparkplug B as a host app. And in the first section of the video, we're going to set up open automation software as an edge of network node. After you install open automation software, the first thing you'll do is start the services, which will automatically start when you restart your operating system. The second step is you'll set up security to set up an OAS admin user. And then the third step is to activate a demo license. Once these steps are complete, you're now ready to set up the OAS edge of network node for Sparkplug B. In our first step, we'll go to configure drivers. And I'll give this driver a unique name. I'll just call it Edge Node. And I'll set the driver type to Sparkplug B. I'll put in the host that I want to connect to. Now we can publish to any external uh, broker or a local broker. OES has a built in MQTT broker running under the default of port 1883. Um, and can also be enabled to secure. You can turn off the OES broker if you want under configure options. Simply go to the MQTT broker section and change the broker port. We've used HiveMQ and also Mosquito for testing. They work very well, but in this demonstration, I'm just gonna use the OES built-in MQTT broker. So I'll use localhost. With OES, there is an authentication that's set up for tag access. So I'm going to use a username and password that will authenticate for both read and write access and browse access to those tags. If you're using a third party broker, use the username and password that needs to authenticate with that third party broker. You can optionally enable SSL if you're connecting to a third party broker that's uh, secure. And if you do so, you can set up to create the certificate on Windows from a certificate file or private key file, which will automatically create it. If you're running on Linux, you do need to uncheck create certificate and use a PFX file. In the protocol version, you can set it to either 3.11 or 5.0. And the client ID must be unique for every driver interface. So in this example, I'm going to use OAS node. And then the mode, I'm going to make it an edge node. So it's going to be publishing data to an MQTT broker. And also being able to be controlled by a host application. That brings up a unique topic of the host mode. If it's set to self-hosted, it will control itself and turn on when the driver is first activated or if remote hosted the edge of network node will be controlled by another host interface and in this demonstration i'm going to actually set up oes to run as a host application as well so i'll use remote hosted and the host id is something that the host application and the edge of network node will share in this, I'll just leave it at the default of host ID. And then the Sparkplug B version can either be 3.0 or 2.2.
The group ID, that's important. In the next step when we define the tags that are going to be published through this driver interface, they would need to match up with a group ID, and I'm going to use the letter A, and then an edge of network node, I'll just use the letter E. can be anything that you would like, but they do need to be unique and specific for that. The device ID filter, that is something that's optional. And if you leave it blank, it'll include all devices that match up with the group ID and edge node that I have spe specified here. But you can also specify a specific device ID that will only include tags that have that device ID defined. So we're complete with that driver interface step. We'll select Add Driver. And now we'll move to Configure Tags to set up the tags that I want to publish. Now I have the default demo tags that are installed with OAS. I'll just use one of them here as a ramp. But as a data source, you can see I can use any of the particular data sources that OES supports. That would include publishing data from Modbus or Allen Bradley, Siemens, OPC UA. Those are all various data sources. Or even receive values from other MQTT edge of nodes and publish them on to other brokers. So it's a transport from one Spark plug interface to another. The ramp signal is a simulation tag. And what I'll do here is I'll put in that group ID of A, edge node E. Remember that was what we specified in the driver interface. I'll specify the device ID as SIM. And the metric name, I'll just use the same as the tag name, which will be ramp. And then I'll select apply changes. That, is, that tag is now ready to be published as a metric node. Now let's go back to the drivers and set up a host app to bring that data in. So with the driver interface name, I'll type in host app as a new driver name. Driver type will still be Spark Plug B. We'll still have the same authentication. The client ID must be changed here. So I'm going to call this one client host. And then the mode, I'll change it to a host app. If you want to use the client app interface, that means it's not going to control the edge nodes to activate them to change its state but instead we'll just interface with it to be able to read data from the edge of network nodes and then also write to specific metric values. So a host app has that functionality plus it will activate the edge of network node to turn it on. Now we change it to host app or client ID, we have a couple additional parameters. One is the reorder timeout. That is used to reorder the payloads as they arrive if they're out of sequence with the sequence number and it has that amount of time that it waits for the next available appropriate sequence number before setting the data as bad quality. And then we have an optional parameter here called add client tags automatically. With that disabled we will manually set up the interface of the client interfaces for the tags with this enabled, it's going to automatically add tags based upon the metric values that it receives that match this particular filter criteria that I can optionally define. If I leave them blank as the filter groups, the filter edge of nodes, and the filter devices, if they're all left blank, then it will add all groups, nodes, and devices that it receives from the broker. If I wanted to include a filter, as per example, remember we had the group A, well I can just include A as the filter group here. So we select that to add that driver, and now we go back to tags, and I hit the select button here, I will see that I have a new group of tags called host app. That matches up with the same as the driver interface name that I used in the host app. If we see here, that's the host app, that's the name of this group. And then, it if we expand the group A and the node E, we see we have a metric there for the sequence number. And then we have the device, 
for SIM, which is the ramp value. So now that's the value being received from the edge of network node. So there we have a complete published to a broker, and now we're receiving the value back from the broker. If we want to set up additional tags, there are two more ways that we can do that. We can use the CSV export or the programmatic interface. For information on the programmatic interface, you can visit our website, Knowledge Base, at openautomationsoftware.com, and there we have the programmatic interface section. So you can use a REST API or a .NET assembly that we provide. It's free to use to programmatically set up the tags and the drivers. So to set up tags, we refer to this section called Get and Set Tag Properties. And then the drivers, that's under the driver interface section. So there you have both C Sharp and Visual Basic examples on how to do that. Let me show you another way, which is the CSV export feature. So if I select CSV export, I can choose which of the properties of a tag I want to export. Now there are nearly 800 properties to a tag. So if you export all of it, there will be a lot of data to review of a tag. So if we want to include just the specific host properties that we used in this ramp tag and other tags, we would select the host group, host edge node, host device, and host metric name. Click continue and then specify the file that we want to export to. If I open this file with Excel, you can see we have these columns for each of the properties. You just fill in the host group, edge node, device that you would like, and then the metric name. Make sure that you have a unique combination for every tag that you host. And so the easy way to do that is just use the same thing as the tag name. This is going to be the list of the new tag parameters for my edge of network node. So now I'll select CSV import. Select that file. And it's updated 137 tags. So on each of these, I now have a new host group ID, edge node, device ID, and the metric name matches the tag name. So now if I hit the select button, if you can remember, we already have that host interface that is set up to automatically add the tags. So we'll have a new list of tags. We use that same device of SIM, but we have a, an entire list of new tags as well as subgroups, because it's actually broken it down to, if we take a look at like PLC and the AI module input one, we can see it's brought that value in. That's the current value of the OES tag itself. If we want to see all of these tags, I can just right click on this SIM group and select add to watch. And these are all of the tags from that are being currently published to the MQTT broker. Some at a faster rate than others, depending upon their simulation rate. Now in the final example, what I'd like to do is show you a real world example of a Modbus tag communicating to a Modbus device. And I'm gonna use an emulator. One of my favorites is uh, this one from uh, RS Sim that you can download, and they they have a very uh, inexpensive uh, royalty fee to pay for to use this one. This is one of my favorites. And so if we go to configure drivers, I'm just going to select clear form and use a new Modbus driver. Set up the IP address 127.0.1. We'll add that driver and then let's go to tags. And here at the root level, I'm going to add a new group called Modbus. And we'll add a new tag called HR1. 
I'll change the data type to a short integer and the data source to Modbus and apply changes. The default is holding register one. If I write a value of one, two, three, you'll see that appears in the emulator to the right. So now let's enable this to be published to the MQTT broker with Spark Plug B protocol. So I'll use that same group and edge node that I have. That's critical so that it matches up with the what I've specified there. But the device can be anything I would like. I'll just call this one Modbus. And the tag name or the metric name I'll use as HR1. And apply those changes. Now we should have a new tag that was added automatically under the group Modbus. You see how it's added that group Modbus. And the tag here called HR1. And so you can see that is the client group ID, edge of node, device, and metric name that we have. And so when I write this value, I'm going to write to the MQTT broker, write a value of 456. And you can see that it wrote to the broker the edge of node in OAS that's defined to that tag, received that device command, and it has written it to the data source defined for that tag, defined to that metric value. So there you see the full interaction from OAS as a host application writing to a Spark Plug B metric value that is then picked up by OES by the edge of network node to then write it to its data source. So you can see OES it is bi-directional. Now we have some other advanced data route features built into the framework of OES. We have the product feature called data route. And under our knowledge base, you'll see more information about that under data destinations and then data route. And there you will see there are three specific ways that we can do the data route. There's multiple tags per event or continuously. There's tag to tag and then there's the IoT publish. If you want to just do tag to tag translation, we could say take this Spark Plug B client interface and write it to say a Siemens controller and there we would just select the target tag and then browse to that Siemens tag that we wanted to write it to. So very easy to do protocol to protocol translation. Also you can do networking very easy built in so OES has advanced networking features of either basic networking or a feature we call live data cloud that is self-hosted. Then the final step we've got all of this configuration working and we can click the save button to save this to a file on our system. And I'll just call this file name Spark Plug B Example. And we are prompted to make that the default configuration when the system starts up. We would want to say yes. So when the Linux or Windows system starts back up, then it's going to automatically load that configuration and begin the communications to the broker. If you want to learn more about open automation software, you can visit the What is Open Automation Software under the About OAS. It's an edge computing solution that's distributed in a network architecture and supports all of these different interfaces built into the platform that can be enabled and deployed from 1 to 1 million tags per server both on Windows, Linux, Raspberry Pi, and Docker.